Hello everyone. Welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at Ilopathology. This is the part 2 of gallstones. If you have landed to this particular video directly, now it's uh, I would advise you to go through the part 1 of gallstones as I had covered the epidemiological aspects, the types and the various risk factors associated with the development of gallstones. Uh, in today's session, at the end of this session, you should be able to understand the pathogenesis of different types of gallstones, the morphology of different types of gallstones, its clinical features, complications and treatment of gallstones. Now we know that there are two uh, major types of gallstones, right? One is the cholesterol type of gallstones, another is a pigment type of gallstones. We will understand now the pathogenesis of the cholesterol type of gallstone. To understand the pathogenesis of cholesterol type of gallstones, let us understand what exactly happens under normal circumstances. We know that uh, liver is a source of cholesterol which is in the form of unilamellar vesicles. These unilamellar vesicles are actually unstable. The unilamellar vesicle meaning a molecule of cholesterol surrounded by one phospholipid bilayer. Okay? Now we know that liver also secretes bile salts. So this biliary cholesterol in the form of unilamellar vesicles combines with the bile salts resulting in the formation of something called as missiles. These missiles are the combination of bile salts, the cholesterol and the phospholipids. Right? This event happens in the gallbladder where the bile is concentrated. This is a mechanism which helps cholesterol to solubilize. So that is the reason why we need to know that the phospholipids and the bile salts together results in solubilizing the cholesterol. These two are the most important components where the cholesterol is rendered soluble. Now let us see what happens when the cholesterol concentration exceeds the solubilizing capacity of the bile. See the solubilizing capacity of bile as we understood it is rendered or is, it is achieved by the phospholipids and the bile salts. right? So whenever there is increased concentration of cholesterol, whenever there is decreased synthesis of bile salts, there is uh, increased cholesterol which exceeds the solubilizing capacity of bile and this condition is referred to as cholesterol supersaturation. Okay? So this is the most important mechanism in the formation of lithogenic bile. Lithogenic means stone forming bile. Now what happens when there is cholesterol supersaturation? The unilamellar vesicles which were there converts or gets converted to multilamellar vesicles where you have multiple layers of phospholipid bilayers which then results in nucleation. So that, that's another important step in the formation of gallstones which is referred to as nucleation. Now what is nucleation? We should understand that with supersaturation cholesterol can no longer remain soluble. Okay, So they basically nucleate to form cholesterol monohydrate crystals. So this nucleation is a very crucial step in the formation of gallstone that is formation of cholesterol monohydrate crystals. This is when we refer the content of bile as biliary sludge because biliary sludge is basically a suspension of precipitates of cholesterol monohydrate in bile. See for nucleation to occur there are pronucleating factors and antinucleating factors. What are these pronucleating factors? The mucin secreted by the gallbladder mucosa itself acts as a pronucleating factor. Apart from mucin, the calcium also acts as pronucleating factors. The various antinucleating factors are apolipoprotein and lecithin. These are the ones which inhibits the conversion of cholesterol into cholesterol monohydrate crystals. Now what happens to these cholesterol monohydrate crystals? Over a period of time, these monohydrate crystals further crystallize resulting in the formation of microstones and this stage is referred to as or this is what we call as microlithiasis. These are microscopic crystal like structures hmm, which cannot be uh, you know, seen through microscopic eyes. This is called as microlithiasis. Over a period of time the microlithiasis grow in size by addition of more and more cholesterol and other constituents of bile resulting in the formation of a macroscopic solid structure which is now referred to as gallstone. So this is how the gallstone is formed particularly the cholesterol type of gallstone is formed. The criteria is cholesterol supersaturation and the next important step is the nucleation. right? Now what is the pathogenesis of pigment type of gallstones? We know that there are two types of uh, pigmented stones. One is the black stones and the other is the brown stone. 
Black stones are formed in sterile bile, whereas brown stones are formed in infected intrahepatic or extrahepatic ducts. Black stones, as we all know that it is because of increased production of unconjugated bilirubin, wherein it is composed of a pigment polymer, usually an unconjugated bilirubin, calcium phosphate and calcium carbonate. Okay, whereas brown stones is basically because of bacterial hydrolysis of conjugated to unconjugated bilirubin. It consists of calcium bilirubinate, calcium soaps of fatty acids and cholesterol. Note that you don't see a calcium carbonate component in brown stones for the reasons um, not really uh, very well understood. The most important aspect or the most important reason why the stones are formed as in the case of cholesterol stones even in pigment stones stasis plays a major role okay stasis enhances the precipitation you know by combination of above components above components matlab, it can be a pigment polymer or a calcium phosphate or a calcium carbonate in the case of black stones or calcium bilirubinate and cholesterol and calcium soaps of fatty acids in the case of brown stones another important determinant is the presence of mucin mucin also also helps in precipitation of these components so that's how the black and the brown stones are formed now coming to the morphology of various types of gall stones firstly cholesterol stones cholesterol stones depends on the content of cholesterol in it pure cholesterol stones contains 100% cholesterol whereas mixed type of cholesterol stones contains cholesterol along with other calcium components right like calcium carbonate like calcium phosphates and lecithin and so usually the pure cholesterol stones are smooth they can be rough sometimes it can be modular in appearance see this modular appearance resembles that of an indian dish very famous indian dish laddu so the laddu appearing calculi or a stone within the gallbladder is actually is actually a modular type of cholesterol stones cholesterol stones are usually single and large they vary in size from 2 to 4 centimeters. When they are multiple, they are faceted because of close opposition of one another, they are multifaceted. Cholesterol stones are most often formed to harden consistency and they are radiolucent. Pure cholesterol stones are radiolucent. However, if there is a combination of calcium carbonate and calcium phosphate, it can be radio opaque. But then most often, pure cholesterol stones are radiolucent. Come to the black stones, these are multiple stones, they are more in number and smaller in size. I mean the more the number of the black stones, the smaller the size, which means to say that the size is inversely proportional to the number of pigment stones. The size varies from 0 0.2 to 1.5 centimeters. These are the ones which are really uh, fragile, they crumble on touch and they are radio opaque because they have lots and lots of quantities of calcium carbonate within them. Whereas the brown stones, brown stones are also multiple. They are brown in color as the name says. They are laminated, soft and greasy in consistency. The size varies from 0 0.2 to 1.5 centimeters. They are not as fragile as black stones but then still they can be easily crushed. Okay, they do not have the calcium carbonate component and they are radiolucent stones. Okay, so the radio uh, opacity is basically because of the presence of calcium uh, in it or in the form of calcium carbonate or calcium phosphate. Okay, so where the black stones will have lots of them, that's why they are radio opaque. Pure cholesterol and pure brown stones, they do not have any, that's why they are radiolucent. And if there is a mixed component of cholesterol and calcium, it can be radio opaque. Now, what are the clinical features of gallstones? Majority of the cases, as I said, they are asymptomatic. Symptoms happen only or symptoms occur only when there is a, some sort of obstruction at the level of cystic duct or the neck of the gallbladder. What happens when there is obstruction? When there is obstruction, there is functional spasm around the obstructed duct resulting in the pain. And this pain is referred to as biliary colic. See, this biliary colic is episodic and severe, gradually increase in severity. They are primarily located in the epigastrium, sometimes can be seen in right upper quadrant as well. It may be precipitated by a large meal. It may radiate to the interscapular region or rarely to the right shoulder. The pain duration varies uh, somewhere between 15 minutes to 3 hours. Okay, It not more than 6 hours. If it is more than 6 hours, and if it is associated with fever, consider that you are not dealing with a 
simple gallstone it can be a complicated gallstone resulting in in cholecystitis or something else so the biliary colic usually lasts somewhere between 15 minutes to 3 hours uh, some important uh, consideration about pain uh, the term biliary colic is actually a misnomer because this is a pain uh, which is progressive in nature unlike the word colic which means intermittent okay so um, the pain is a better word to uh, symptom related to obstruction of gallbladder what are the complications of gallstones so the complications of gallstones are again basically because of either obstruction at the level of cystic duct or at the level of neck of the gallbladder or obstruction anywhere in the long the biliary tract the first and the foremost complication when it comes to uh, the gallbladder as such is acute cholecystitis so when there is obstruction of gallbladder at the level of neck you know the content might increase initially there can be fluidy content and that is referred to as hydrops gallbladder and the mucin if the mucus content is more it, if the entire gallbladder is filled with mucus it's referred to as mucosal of gallbladder and because of cholecystitis if there is inflammation prolonged inflammation and then lots and lots of neutrophils within the lumen and resulting in the formation of purulent material that is referred to as empyema of the gallbladder and if the gallbladder is unable to hold the content it may perforate okay and this perforation is the most dangerous one because perforation leads to peritoneal inflammation that is peritonitis repeated attacks of you know mild acute inflammation can result in chronic cholecystitis remember stone is an irritant so long standing irritation may result in metaplastic transformation of the gallbladder lining epithelium it can result in dysplasia and neoplastic uh, transformation ultimately might lead to carcinoma of the gallbladder now what happens if the stones gets dislodged from the cystic duct into the common bile duct or the common hepatic duct this is now referred to as cholecholithiasis. Now, what happens when there is cholecholithiasis and then obstruction? It might result in biliary obstruction, and because of biliary obstruction, the bile will no longer be able to go into the gallbladder, or will no, long, no longer will be able to enter the common bile duct, resulting in obstruction and thereby resulting in obstructive jaundice. Because of obstruction, there can be inflammation which is now referred to as acute cholangitis inflammation of the biliary tree is now referred to as acute cholangitis the inflammation may extend into the pancreatic duct and thereby the pancreas and result in pancreatitis this is a rare occasion now let us understand some other uh, important complications one remember we are dealing with a large cholesterol stone here if the ga i mean gallbladder is inflamed and infected there is always a possibility that there can be chances of fistula formation between the gallbladder and the segment of intestine stomach or colon okay and that is referred to as biliary enteric type of fistulas the first one between the gallbladder and the duodenum the second one might be between the gallbladder and even the large intestine or the colon the third one can be between the gallbladder and the stomach depending upon the position of the gallbladder on the adjacent uh, structures and the fourth one can be between the gallbladder and the common bile duct so these biliary enteric fistulas are very important complications of gallstones now let us see one of the type of biliary enteric fistula okay so uh, whenever there is inflammation of the gallbladder we call it as acute cholecystitis right there there will be inflammation of the of all the walls of the gallbladder including the serosal layer okay because of serosal inflammation the gallbladder can now adhere onto the serosal surface of the adjacent intestinal loop okay now gradually once there is um, adhesion there can be erosion because of the you know pressure effect of the gallstone and that might lead to fistulous tract formation so now there is an opening of the connection between the gallbladder and the duodenum the stone which was there in the gallbladder is now has now entered into the duodenum and through the duodenum it might enter the distal part of the ileum where it obstructs okay it might not be able to pass through the narrow end of distal ileum so thereby causing small intestinal obstruction okay this particular entity this clinical entity is referred to as gallstone ileus because this is an ileal obstruction which is result which has resulted due to a gallstone which has entered the ileum because of biliary enteric fistula now consider another entity where the gallstone has come out of the gallbladder into the duodenum 
but it does not pass through okay it is stuck there in the duodenum itself sometimes the gallstone can be stuck in the proximal part of duodenum now what happens in that scenario there will be gastric outlet obstruction okay there will be symptoms of gastric outlet obstruction and this clinical scenario is referred to as bovaret syndrome this is the rarest variant of gallstone ileus now quickly the complications of gallstones can be within the gallbladder where it can result um, into acute cholecystitis eye drops mucosal empyema of gallbladder or even perforation resulting in peritonitis a long standing irritation resulting in carcinoma of gallbladder when it comes to the biliary tree it can result in simple cholelithiasis or complicated ones resulting in obstruction leading to obstructive jaundice inflammation leading to acute cholangitis and lastly it can be a rare complication like gallstone ileus or bovaret syndrome which is the rarest variant of gallstone ileus now coming to the last part which is the treatment uh, of course treatment is beyond the scope of this particular uh, um, session yet i need to tell that surgery is currently considered the only effective treatment in the management of symptomatic gallstones if the gallstones are asymptomatic nothing is done but symptomatic gallstones various modalities of treatment have been tried but as of now as on today surgery is considered the only effective treatment in summary we understood the pathogenesis of different types of gallstones we understood the morphology of different types of gallstones its clinical features and various complications and finally a part of treatment thank you for watching if you like this please hit a like button do comment if you have any questions i will be happy to answer those questions don't forget to subscribe the channel and don't forget to share it thank you